There's no question that last season the Denver Broncos were one of the biggest disappointments in the NFL, but we can't discredit the fact that they had 22 total players placed on injured reserve, including 12 starters. The Broncos, it took them 8 running backs just to get through the season, that's how bad it was. Russell Wilson, worst season of his career. Why did he have the worst season of his career? A couple of reasons, I thought he held onto the ball too long, but also the Broncos gave up a league leading 181 total QB pressures in 63 sacks, which is unsustainable. But the Broncos, they've gone out there, they brought in Mike McGlinchey, who had a career year, 81.3% run block win rate, which was fifth overall among tackles. Ben Powers is one of the best run blocking guards in the league. The Ravens, they were second in the NFL in rushing. Powers alone trailed only Landon Dickerson, who made the Pro Bowl in terms of guards who had a 78.8% run block win rate, playing at least 200 snaps. So you can see the Broncos are prioritizing guys who can block in the run versus guys who can block in the pass. And it makes sense because in order to get the most out of Russell Wilson, you have to be able to run the football and then, of course, build play action off of that. Action, boom, throw it deep. Russ has an incredible deep ball. Even last season, people won't tell you that Russ was one of the best quarterbacks in the league at the deep ball. Nothing is going to change. The Broncos, they also did go out there and draft a receiver in the third round, traded up to get him. Marvin Mims broke out for the Sooners in 2022, caught 54 passes for 1,083 yards and six touchdowns. His 4.38 speed adds an explosive element to the offense that's been lacking due to KJ Hamler not being able to stay healthy. He missed 10 games in 2022. He also bring in veterans like Marcus Calloway and little Jordan Humphrey. Still have Cortland Sutton. Jerry Judy showed incredible promise at the end of last season. Tim Patrick's coming back. There's no lack of receivers at all for the Broncos. The Broncos did finish off the season playing their best football of the year. You look at every single game the Broncos scored more than 24 points. All of them were at the end of the season. A lot of that has to do with promoting Latavius Murray to the starter in week 12. He carried the ball 97 times for 494 yards. That's over, slightly over 5 yards per carry. Zero fumbles and 180 touches for all Denver running backs in the final 7 weeks of the season. After they cut Melvin Gordon, they went from 3.9 yards per carry over the first 10 games to 5.1 yards per carry. Murray proved that leadership and stability goes a long way in the league, and the Broncos are hoping that Samaje Ryan can fill in for Javante Williams while he recovers from his torn ACL that he suffered last season. I like Ryan. The thing for him is that he's been able to stay healthy his whole career. He's extremely durable. For the Bengals, we saw him put up 1,490 yards from scrimmage and 11 total touchdowns across 54 appearances. He has been the backup behind Joe Mixon, the last season, he did have 95 carries for 394 yards, which is 4.1 yards per carry. P. Ryan also caught 38 passes for 287 yards through the air while hauling in four receiving touchdowns. Did make two other moves to bolster the protection. They went out there and of course they drafted Alex Forsyth out of Oregon. He fell all the way to 257, but he can play anywhere. He can play guard, tackle, center, which is really unique. One of the most underrated moves the Broncos made was getting a run blocking tight end in Chris Manhurts. He's 6'6", 235 pounds. I remember watching him play for the Carolina Panthers. He can go up with some of the league's most elite edge rushers. He's very good. He's going to open up a ton of lanes in the run game. This is something that the Broncos just had to be able to do. Their blocking was atrocious last season. And my favorite move that the Broncos made was going out there and bringing in Zach Allen, who had 47 tackles, 23 solo, five and a half sacks, and eight pass breakups in just 13 games before suffering a late season hand injury. He made the most of his contract year in Arizona, showed the ability to play across the defensive line while handling the highest percentage of defensive snaps in his career at 79. He's a useful player who any defense would be happy to have. 21 quarterback hits, a combined 14 tackles for a loss. Run stuffs, I mean, all over the place. Allen had a 6.4 tackle for loss plus run stuff rate, which was fifth among all NFL defenders with 200 or more snaps. He can contribute in both the run and the pass playing as either a gap shooter or a stack and shed style player. He was a pleasant surprise for a Cardinals team that felt like it was coasting for most of the season. I mean, Allen, he graded out as the second best run stopper behind Aaron Donald last season, which is incredible. The Broncos, they also brought in Jarrett Stidham to be the backup quarterback. I thought he looked good for the Raiders last year, but I'll never forget that game against the 49ers where Stidham looked like a man possessed. You got Michael Burton, of course, he was the fullback for the Saints, so that's why he was brought in, just to have that guy who can run the scheme. 
Other players I'm looking at, Drew Sanders, of course, came out of Arkansas, 6'4", 235. I thought he was the top inside linebacker prospect in the entire class, yet he fell to the third round for the Broncos. Looking at a player that racked up 103 tackles, 13 and a half for a loss, nine and a half sacks, and an interception. The Broncos also brought back the team's leading tackler from last season, and Alex Singleton, of course, at linebacker. You've got Aaron Browning, who's intriguing as a talent. Nick Benito, who was a second round pick last year. Randy Gregory, we know what he brings when he's on the field, right? Last season, they did not play well in the division. They finished one and five overall. Beat, of course, the Chargers at the end of the year. I thought they'd beat the Chiefs. I watched that full game and it came down to the wire. It really came down to a couple of plays, which was the difference. And the Chiefs ended up winning the Super Bowl. So with this new personnel, I think the Broncos will have a floor of eight games. I know that's high. I think the Broncos at minimum will win eight games next season. I think at most will be 11. I actually am really pleased with this team. I know that they basically are retooling on the fly, bringing Sean Payton and spending a ton of money, but I think they're going to be much better at running the ball, going out and getting some Maji P. Ryan, of course, Javante Williams going back and having two of some of the best run blocking linemen in the league, having one of the best, if not the best run blocking tight end in the league. Absolutely good player. Michael Burton's here. Russell Wilson will throw 26 touchdowns against eight interceptions. I'm looking at a Broncos offense that's going to finish around top 10 in the league, probably be around 11 or 12, which would be a, a massive increase compared to the dead last that they were at last season in pretty much every statistical category. And by the way, Sean Payton, I mean, he had you know, Taysom Hill, Trevor Simeon. He also had you know, was, Winston got hurt that year, right? And they finished 19th in offense. So Russell Wilson's a huge upgrade over those players. They also have more weapons. Uh, going out and Javante Williams coming back. We know what he brings. I mean, his rookie season led the NFL in tackles. I love Javante Williams. I'm so pissed off, not just because of fantasy, but you just don't want to see players, anyone get injured, especially your star guy in the offense, though. I mean, I hope Javante Williams will make this team a hell of a lot better. So getting him back and Sutton, and Judy, and Tim Patrick, of course, Marvin Mims. These guys are all going to be big time weapons for us. The improved blocking, the improved personnel overall on the field there's just a lot better football players on this broncos team nine ten wins will that be enough for the wild card is a thing but that's a huge difference from winning five games that they did last season i think the broncos will be a lot better in the division as well i think honestly the broncos will have a winning record in the division which would be a, again a big difference from when they won one game last season i mean i'm looking at the raiders i think they'll win both of those games the chargers they'll split it again and the Kansas City chiefs they'll split a four and two so four and two in the division yeah that's a winning record that, that's a winning as a record for the Broncos. And I'm going to be watching a lot of Broncos games. There's something about this team where it's like, I just like watching them. 